All right, grab your roll. Now you can use a small roll or a bigger roll. It's up to you. It's just more of like whatever's most, most, whatever's most convenient. We're just easing in here. So we're stimulating the tissue. We are not trying to hurt ourselves. We're not trying to make it painful. You might notice it's a little painful as you go, but notice that you're just getting that first level of tissue to start to have more fluid, waking back up, stimulating, turning on. It's a nice little warm up for the tissue. So you start in the middle, do 10 passes through the middle, do 10 passes on each side. So notice we're just doing that bottom half and then we'll move up and go a little bit higher. So 10 passes through the middle. Notice you can kind of drag yourself along the floor. That's a little bit more helpful. Otherwise, just bend and straighten is just fine. We're not trying to stimulate the nervous system and get the body to go into long holds and releases. That's going to require a longer recovery. We're just trying to create movement and attention into the fascia system so that either one, you're just preparing for the day, you're warming up for your workout, you're cooling down, you're just doing it as what your activity is for the day. So this is just another style, another type. There's a lot of theories with fascia. So once you get the bottom part, the middle part, then you can do one leg at a time because then you're just gonna bring a little bit more tension, but you're treating the whole space. So do, again, we're just gonna stay with 10 on each area, all the way up, all the way down. Not trying to make it painful, just trying to bring attention to it, wake it up a little bit. You can still do both at the same time. It just gives you a little bit more space to go all the way up and all the way down without putting too much pressure or weight onto the whole system and we need to strengthen our wrist. So it can be helpful, but foam rolling can take a bigger toll as you get used to the moving around it. It just takes a little bit of time. So all the way up, all the way down, since we already did the bottom section and the top section, you can have a little bit more space, a little bit more pressure now that it's stimulated and ready to go. Then once you've got your 10, you can either bend and extend, you can slide across the floor, whatever is most convenient, release your wrists whenever you need to. If it starts to nag at you a little bit, shake the arms out, roll the wrist around, not putting any extra tension on any area of the body. Keep the breathing going nice and smooth in through the nose. You can do in through the nose, out through the nose, which is an ujjayi breath, which is gonna create a little bit more heat into the body, or you can just breathe naturally. Moving on to the top of the shin, front of the shin, front of the leg. Uh, this is, I clipped in another video to show an easier way. So this is level one to gently start to wake up that front of the tissue. So you don't want to put a lot of leverage here. This is kind of like where you would hit your shin and it would be tender. Uh, so gently you can go over the bone, that's totally fine. That periosteum tissue that covers the bone and then encapsulates the joint. Uh, it's nice to get some of that tissue moving. So just be gentle, start with short at the bottom as it starts to grow. So you can do that bottom half and then that top half and then full range of motion. So we're not putting a bunch of weight, we're just nice and gently moving it as far as we can forward and as far as we can back to stimulate all the tissue within the calf. You can turn and sit on your side to get that inside because this is where it's gonna be just a little bit more tender. So be gentle. When we trigger the nervous system with pain, it tends to send it into a guarded state. So just slowly work your way up that shin and side of the calf, but be easy, be smooth. We're not trying to force our weight, we're just trying to bring fluid to the tissue. So then the other option is just balancing and keeping that front leg as your base. And so you can come over the foot and shin. So just work that bottom half five to 10 times and then you can start to increase that range of motion. So if you are doing the balancing technique, it, it doesn't really matter which way you do it. This is just showing a little bit of each on how you hit it. 
Uh, so how open your hips are, are going to really make a difference here. So you can same thing, start on that shin, start to extend that range of motion. Just make sure that you hit every part of the calf. All right, moving on to then stretching the calf for elasticity. You want your knee to go forward. Your toe might go off to the side. That's okay. We've got more mobility in our ankles, but it's all about the heel staying down. So you're just going forward and back, but not pushing into it. Just find that end range of end range of motion that your body can handle without being aggressive or forceful. So just breathe into those movements. Attempt to keep the heel down if you can. Uh, it doesn't matter how close you are, how far away, whatever you need to do to put your body in that position to let the calf go. You can come up under your toes. This might be a little bit much. Uh, so it just depends on your feet. So knees together, toes together, and you're using the foam roll as a balance as you tap the knees towards the floor. So this is just that stretch and strengthen technique that's going to give you more of that spring, more of that bounce. Our feet are limited in our shoes.